Welcome back everyone to another build order tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at the Zerg's perspective in ZVT. This is going to be a general macro build that you can use on any map and pretty much any map. It's Ling based, you've seen it by the likes of Nurcio and everyone like that. And it's not exactly simple, but it is the basic build that's going to get you pretty far in your Zerg career. Let's get started. First, you're going to go with the 12 drone. The 13 Overlord. And two more drones, the Overlord pops. Three more. Send your drone down to take your natural. It's a 17 hatchery. And you're gonna get two more drones, a gas, and then your spawning pool. Two more drones. Nineteen Overlord. Make sure to lose your scouting overlords to a stray marine. And then around now, you're going to take your guys off of gas, two of the drones off of gas, get your double queen and four lings, your spawning pool finishes, as well as start that speed. Continue droning for a little bit now. Your Ling should probably stay at home in preparation for the Reaper. Send a drone out to get your third. And about 30 supply, take that hatchery. Make sure not to get supply blocked. Get a 32 Overlord. Get another Queen. And then one more Queen. At around 3.30, your speed is going to finish, and that also signals you to put all the drones back into that one gas geyser. Hotkey those queens and start your creep spread at the natural. Get double evolution chambers, around 50 supply, or 345. Get a queen at your now third base finished. And one more queen, probably at your natural. Keep droning. Start your 1-1. One, one with melee upgrades and carapace. Make sure you're not getting supply blocked. At around 4.30, you're going to make 20 lings. 
And around 440, this is the benchmark, you're gonna have six queens, about 42 drones, and around 20 lings. Take your second gas. Keep injecting, keep make sure you're not supply blocked. And at five minutes, this is when a typical two base Terran attack will hit, especially those two one one builds. So make sure that your queens and lings are prepared for that. Take your fourth hatchery, but only if you have successfully defended against the push. Otherwise, continue building lings until you actually can deal with it. Around 525, you're going to make a baneling nest, a lair, and have around 52 drones. You're going to want to consistently have about 20 to 30 lings in your army for just in case as you defend against multiple drops and harassment and all that. Make sure that your queens are also with you and target firing those medevacs. Around 540, you're going to take a macro hatch as well as get your third gas in preparation for your layer upgrades. Try and get your creep spread going if you can remember. Around 6 minutes, you're going to finalize your last drone round and have about 65 to 70 drones. From here on out, you probably won't have to remake those or make any more. Your lair's about finished right now, so start your 2-2. Get your baneling speed as well. Get a fourth gas and three more queens. From here on out, any extra larvae should be going into army units. One last thing before we get into the general build discussion, and that's that the main focus of this build is to get to that hive with maxed out upgraded Ultralisk. So just keep in mind that around 745, you are going to want to build an infestation pit and try your best to get to hive and Ultralisk safely. Suggested maps. Good news. Any of the maps, even the tighter maps like Dasan Station, this is technically a build that you can do. Just keep in mind that there are certain abusive positions on each individual map that you'll have to take into account because your lings don't have range. You don't want to be caught getting them behind a nice mineral line or funneled through a choke. If you prepare correctly, scout correctly, you should be able to use this build and defend. Now for the strengths and weaknesses. So first of all, strengths, solid macro foundation. If you just want to learn Zerg and you're focusing on learning every aspect of it, so creep spread, map control, uh, larva inject, map awareness, everything like that, this is going to get you that solid macro game that's going to last a while. It is very, for the most part, very defensive. So. If you're the more aggressive type of player, maybe you don't want to try this, but if you're just looking to improve, this is really nice for that. Queen use provides a very solid defense in any Zerg build, really, but of course this one does give you those extra queens um, to purposefully defend against attacks, especially those mid-game attacks, not the cheeses or the one base builds or the surprise builds like Hellbats, although queens can still very much so help you defend against those. Ling upgrades transition well into Ultralisk. So, like I said, this is kind of the ultimate goal, but you want to get there safely. So, you know, if you do get to Ultralisk, you know that you're going to have some really good upgrades and they're going to be very powerful. And last, with good scouting, any build can be defended. Kind of touched on that on the map choices and, you know, that it's all good maps and whatnot. And that's where really it's going to come down to you as a Zerg player. So you're going to need to get the scout in, whether that's the, you know, Overlord Suicide or getting faster Overlord Speed. You can certainly find a place to kind of wiggle it in there. Uh, constant ling spreads and whatnot. All very important stuff. If you think that you can do this build and not <laughs> have to scout or react, then you're not prepared to play Zerg. Um, 
And if you didn't know that, then now you do. If you're Zerg, you're going to need to get that scouting. Especially versus Terran, it's still a very active race. And sometimes you will need to get that earlier Baneling Nest, or even a Roach Warren if it suddenly becomes that it's a, a mech build, for instance. But with good scouting, this build can still you know, lend you a good macro game, even if you have to change it up a little bit. All right, now for the weaknesses of this build, because it can't be a perfect build, right? And it's, um, I mean, it's solid, of course, and uh, not, not perfect, but first of all, improper placement of units can result in basically instant loss. So that sounds really intimidating and like, hey, what the heck, I thought this was a really easy build. Easy's not correct, solid is. So your queens should always be with your lings for the most part, if you're expecting a main attack, for instance. If you're expecting drops, then certainly a split can be good. Uh, ideally, you're always going to have some amount of queens to hit the medevac and some amount of queens to hit the, um, or some, uh, sorry, some amount of lings to hit the marines. Just keep that in mind. If you're, you know, God knows where with everything, and they get behind a mineral line, it's going to be tough to clean up. Surprise Hellbat Hellion builds can also be instant GG. So again, this all comes back to just like, you're playing Zerg, and if you don't know what you're getting into when you play Zerg, then you're learning right now uh, with trying to learn a solid macro build. It's very difficult to actually play uh, a solid macro game as Zerg, because you can't just focus on one build and perfect that. You have to react to every single game individually. So this just comes down to actually getting a surprise um, or sorry, scouting on such things like that. Uh, now make sure that you have queens. Uh, if you feel the necessity, get Baneling Nest. That can help against those type of uh, attacks with Hellbats. Uh, Roach War in an emergency and then swapping back into Ling production can also be used. But just keep this in mind. This is weak against mech builds. Again, scouting. If you see that it's mech, if you see more than one factory, then you're probably going to want to swap out of Lings as your only ground force. Uh, certainly see in pro games that they might actually still stay on Lings, even go to Mutas, uh, think back to Heart of the Swarm, that would actually happen, but it's actually a much more difficult way to play. I would suggest switching over into Roaches and, uh, you know, Roach Ravager and whatnot, but... That is going to, have to be co covered in a different <laughs> video. Just know that this will be weak against mech builds. And then finally, it has limited map control up until a point. So you're not really getting anything done in the early game. You know, for the first five minutes, it's really you prepping a macro game and just hoping that you can defend against anything they throw at you. So taking the Zonaga is always useful. Having lanes around the map, always useful. Having overlords, uh, you know, drop creep, always useful, all these things. But you're not the one that's really supposed to be aggressive. Um, really at most around that mid game attack, you're going to have maybe like a counter attack set up, right? Like 20 lings somewhere trying to sneak by, but that's, that's pretty much it until you feel like you really have a lot of control and a lot of creep spread as well going into the middle map. And then it kind of swings back into your favor and it's up to the Terran to feel comfortable pushing out. All right, tips and tricks. Get early Overlord scouting to feel confident in your defenses. If the rest of this video did not convince you that scouting is really important, I hope that this clearly does. You can get fast Overlord speed, or you can suicide an Overlord. If you want to look at pro gamers who do both, Nurchio usually it doesn't even suicide an Overlord. He actually just usually knows based on other things, but there's that. Snoot always gets the early Overlord speed, so that might be someone you can look to if you want to incorporate that. Five minutes is the timing of the standard 2-1-1 Terran build, which is quite popular on ladder, but it is not the only two base build or build in general that Terrans can do, so keep that in mind. Invest in one or two spore crawlers in uh, common harassment locations. Now that's on Frost, for instance, going to be the ledges of your natural. That's where they're going to drop. That's where they're going to send uh, their Liberator harassment later on. Uh, it's also going to be very helpful in defending against the medevac drops in general, medevac pushes, because if a spore crawler is in place and a Terran knows they're going to lose a medevac, they might not even bother pushing into a very tricky location. If uncertain, a cautionary roach warren is okay, or baneling nest. We talked about that before. If you're facing mech, or if you don't know if they're going for a hellbat build, then that's all okay. 
Uh, additionally, if you don't know if they're going to go for Banshees or not, which isn't too popular but can still happen, Cautionary Spore Crawlers aren't that bad either, one in each base, and then they can be repositioned later to help against, you know, general drops. Not a bad idea. And finally, always target fire medevacs with queens. These builds, most Zerg builds, depend heavily on that in their defenses. So the Lings, you know, they really are meant to just kind of provide that, like, shoo shoo, get away, and the queens are the ones that are actually saying like no you actually have to leave because your medevacs are dead it is super important super super important so practice your queen control if it's not too good right now get a hotkey for those queens on the front line because you are going to need it last here's a list of professional game examples where this build has been used by a pro zerg against a pro terran And finally, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube. It would really help me out. If you have any suggestions for the formats or you know some things that be done differently, or if you have suggestions for builds that you would like to see, if there's enough of you saying that you wanna see X or Y build, I'll certainly look into making those build order videos over any of the other ones that I already have planned. So 